I hope you know that we are living now in an age where you don't have to lose anything. Yes. Every wisdom shared here, generations to come, people can listen to it. Yes. I'm passionate about wisdom. Like I said, why did I become passionate about wisdom? Foolishness. Tell somebody, say, please change or you will not sit next to me next time. Tell somebody you are born down. So if you're not learning fast, you're going to remain down. Tell somebody you are born ignorant. Better start learning fast. If your life is going to change. Did someone hear that? Yes. I don't think the head is clear. Tell somebody you are born ignorant. You are born ignorant. You better start learning fast. You better start learning fast. Otherwise, the ignorance does not go anywhere. Otherwise, the ignorance does not go anywhere. Do you know there are things that they have spoken about us as a people that hurt me as a person? Yes. Have you heard this statement? If you want to hide anything from a black person, put it in a book. Yes. You'll never read it. <laughs> You've heard that statement, isn't it? Yes. Now look at the foolishness and the stupidity around it. Everyone has heard that statement. Then ask them, how many books do you read in a week? <laughs> Did, you know, there are certain things, I don't even know how to address them and deal with them. Everyone in here, if not most, would say, you've said you've heard that statement. If you want to hide something from a black man, put it in a book. You'll never read it. But imagine, with knowing that statement, you don't read minimum three books in a week. Where do you think you're going with your life? Then you want somebody to come before you and prophesy deliver you, break cases, and all manner of things. Not understanding that what is broken in a black person is his mind. Mm. I hope you are ready for today. If you can't break the way you think, the way you see things, it doesn't matter what you break. It does not matter what you try to do. The greatest limitation of a black person is the way they think, the way they see themselves, and the picture they have of life. That's the greatest limitation. Do you know that as you are like this, if I say how many want to be successful, all the hands will go up. Let me try it. How many want to be successful? <laughs> okay, the hands down. How many want to be wealthy? <laughs> okay, wealthy, not everyone. <laughs> Young Mono. Already that's a problem. <laughs> Do you know that already that's a problem? Tell somebody you must want to become wealthy. You must want to become wealthy. Tell somebody to say poverty is bad. Poverty is bad. Tell somebody when you are poor, when you are poor, you lose potential. You lose potential. Tell somebody when you are poor, when you are poor, you don't have friends. You don't have friends. Tell somebody when you are poor, when you are poor, nobody likes you. Nobody likes you. Tell somebody when you are poor, when you are poor. Your family rejects you. Even your family the rejects people you. you were born and raised together. The people you are born and raised Tell somebody together. when you are poor. When you are poor, you become a parasite. You become a parasite. Tell somebody when you are poor. When you are poor, you live on people. You live on people. Tell somebody when you are poor. When you are poor, you live on handouts. You live on handouts. So tell somebody you can't develop. You can't develop. Tell somebody you can't evolve. You can't evolve. So listen, I know 
because of culturing and what we've seen, which is a wrong example we have, we think, do you know that an average person thinks money is bad? I'm going to deal with a lot of things today, so you must be able to eat a lot. Do you know that an average person thinks money is bad? Because you saw someone who didn't have money, and when they had money, they changed. Now, let me correct that. It's not the money that changed them. I want you to follow me. When you are poor, you pretend. When you are poor, you are not real. When you are poor, you are not straight. So the day you will have money, you will now show your true color. Are you hearing what you are hearing? Do not trust the poor person. Because poor people wear what we call a mask. Follow me. If you are poor and you are my friend, because you know I can give you money, when I tell you, let's go to Kafue, you will say, okay, Pastor Wesley, let's go. <laughs> when I tell you, come home this weekend, you will come home. Why? You know, man, or or Jama, Vazan Tandiza. Are you following me? Yes. But when you have the money, if I tell you come, you can tell me why must I come? I have my own things that I need to do. Mm. So you think money has changed the person when all the time they wanted to tell you that, but they were broke. So they didn't speak. Yes. <laughs> oh. <laughs> when you don't have money, you don't have a voice. Why do you think Africa is the way it is? Africa is the most frustrating place because they have all the money, but they don't have the wisdom on how to bring out the money. The best land in the world, the best arable land in the world is in Africa. The most beautiful water bodies if you want to do irrigation, are in Africa. The best weather is in Africa. All the minerals you could ever think of are in Africa. Everything that Africa needs to be is here. But what is the problem? What I said when I started the case of a black person or an African is not all that, it's here. When you are meant to believe that you can't, you think you can't, and you accept you can't, and you program yourself that it can't be done. Imagine, I want you to think, please imagine, that. if you found copper thousands of years ago, you found copper, and you are mining it,
because it was not an experience in my father. I will grow up not valuing education, not going for education. My children will be born like that. So what you call a generational case of poverty, because we are not educated, thus we are not exposed, thus our potential and skills are hidden and locked up in us, and we are poor, is because someone at the beginning in front did not step out to break through into life. So what the Z generation is dealing with is darkness, ignorance, that someone has not challenged. Tell somebody you must repair or get a signal. Tell somebody you must repel against ignorance. Tell somebody you must repel against ignorance. You must repel against ignorance. Do you know that all of you, as you are seated here, you have the potential and the capacity to become anything? Do you know the problem I have with that? Most of you will not, because you have to will it. No one will put a gun to your head, become great. No one will put a gun to your head, or begin to develop your mind. No one will put a gun to your head to say, start buying books. Have you seen that we love as a people now? Let me talk maybe as a people the way we think, so that you must see what you need to deal with. Have you seen that as a people, we love looking good? We love more looking smart than being smart. <laughs> Tell somebody there is a big difference. There is a big difference. Tell somebody you can look smart. You can look smart. And not be smart. And not be smart. Tell somebody we know when you open your mouth. We know when you open your mouth. <laughs> Have you seen that we all have labels here? We all have designer's clothes. Yes. Have you seen that we all have good and finer things of life? Yes. Tell somebody, it's okay to look good. It's okay to look good. If you are good. If you are good. Tell somebody, it's okay to look smart. It's okay to look smart. If you are smart. If you are smart. Tell somebody, if you look good. If you look good. But you are not good. But you are not good. It's what you want. Tell so somebody if you look smart, if you look smart, but you are not smart. But you are not smart. This what you got. This what you got. Tell somebody worst of all. Worst of all. She was it gone now. She was it gone. Why am I saying that? Imagine I'm speaking to a generation who has all the knowledge in the world in their fingertips, in your phone. All the knowledge in the world is on YouTube. All the, hear me, everything that has ever been done is on YouTube. Then somebody, all they do with the phone is to watch music videos. <laughs> imagine, imagine, look at the levitation in thinking. All the knowledge Anything you'd ever want to learn is on YouTube. Anything. Engineering, plumbing, accountants, business, investing. Anything you'd ever want to learn is on YouTube. And that world is in your hands. You have the whole world in your hands. Mm -hmm. Then somebody is addicted to pornography. <laughs> 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 Imagine there are guys. In, have you seen in church how people move by the Holy Spirit? Yes. Every time I've been there, I've skate. Where is that coming from? Bamele Alandana. Why is that person failing to come up with a business idea to bring out an industry in Zambia? 
You are watching pornography most of the time. Where would your mind ever think of a business idea? Listen, look at what most people do with the phone. I per Facebook, I per WhatsApp, or the other social apps that have come. TikTok. Yeah, TikTok, Instagram. 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 Now, I, I, I love you because you know all of these. <laughs> but you know what I don't like? They are other people's creation. You are on them having fun, saying you can socialize, you can relate with your friend, but the person who brought it solved the problem. The person who started Facebook solved a social problem of relating. Do you know he was in a university just like you? He was in a college just like you. And he thought to say, you know what? Instead of Nigazenda Kurum Yamunzanga, Kuata Dom Hoja, why can't I create an app that I room could in room to start communicate? So he thought of creating a solution on how to relate. And today it's a wild phenomenon. It's one of the greatest ideas that was ever birthed. Because someone thought of creating value. You are enjoying Facebook. I Everything you are doing, you are enjoying Facebook. But you are not getting the concept. One person thought, how can I bring something that can create a social platform where people can relate? And today is a billionaire. Today he has impacted humanity and the way we relate. <clears throat> Instead of you enjoying the social apps, you are supposed to enjoy them. That's why they were created. My question is, what are you supposed to create? That's why we are here today. Everything you are enjoying, the music you are enjoying, someone created. The movie you are watching, someone created. The designer clothes, the leper you love, someone created. The cologne, the perfume you love, it is someone's creation. When will Zambia, when will Africa, when will the world eat from your brainchild? Or is it you who just wants to multiply and the only multiplying you know is children? <laughs> <laughs> it's funny when you hear young guys matai prayer at assassin. Mwana ni assassin ni anze, ukasi ni assassinating children. And unfortunately, some of you girls or ladies are so blind by the sweet talk. <laughs> that you make the assassin a true assassin. <laughs> because don't forget, assassins have got targets. <laughs> oh my God. Tell somebody, tell a neighbor, assassin and a target. Assassin and a target. Tell them, I hope you do a target. I hope you do a target. <laughs> Guys whose only business here is to sleep with girls. Sanakoro Kunzira. Sanakoro Kunzira. Future. And the destiny. Every ambition yake. Wakao na kacha. Imagine, imagine, follow me. Imagine he can be creative. Gofuni na mukazi. I get creativity open and run. <laughs> Imagine an creative kupesa way yo kuta akatenge kagero kat ari creative as a pesa way as a tapesist but sari creative kupesa solution ya an employment 
Sari creative better solution to whatever problems from Zambia. Then he would die a useless person. Possibly even just sick. But when they were studying for school, when they were <laughs> Mark Zuckerberg assassinated the social media and he came up with Facebook and today all of us are captured. Bill Gates assassinated software. Imagine he used to say in his teens I want to make software that is so user friendly that my mother can use. That was his passion. To create software that was so user friendly and everyone fell in love with him and made him the richest man. Jeff Bezos came and says, you know what, instead of people shopping everywhere, how can I create a place where people can shop from? And he created Amazon, a place where people can shop and buy anything from anywhere in the world, and it will get to them. Elon Musk came and says, this gas, this emission is polluting and destroying people. How can we make electric cars that will not be harmful to the environment? And he has broken forth. My question is, what are you supposed to give birth to? What are you supposed to start thinking of? What is the dream inside you? What is the vision inside you? What did God put in you that made you become alive? Because most of you do not understand that God does not begin until he finishes. Write that down. God does not begin until he finishes. God does not begin until he has write the scripture down Isaiah chapter 46 verse 10 to 12 Isaiah 46 Isaiah 46 maybe let me read it to you 10 to 12 Isaiah 46 have you written it down? Yes. Can I read it for you? Yes. Isaiah 46, listen to verse 10. I make known the end from the beginning, from ancient times what is still to come. I say, my purpose will stand, and I will do all that I please. Have you heard that? I'm, I'll just read verse 10. Listen, Isaiah 46, verse 10. I make known the end from the beginning. Meaning, God does not start anything that he has not finished. What you are hearing is very powerful, but at the same time, it will open you to begin to search inside you. Because, listen, he makes known the end from the beginning. Meaning, before God begins, he must finish something first. So the fact that you are alive and your life began is proof that there is something that God finished, that he allowed conception to take place in your mother's womb so that you can be given birth to, so that you can now start to finish what God finished. You call it your purpose. You call it your assignment. You call it your dream. God makes known the end from the beginning. Meaning with God, he does not begin except he has finished. Question today, what did God finish over your life that allowed your beginning?
You don't get that playing. You don't get that all over. You don't get that in parties. You don't get that drinking. You don't get that smoking. No! You get that when you hear something like this, then you begin to think. And then you begin to inquire. Lord, what was I created for? Why? What did you finish that I'm supposed to begin? What did you finish that I'm supposed to begin? I asked, how many people want to be successful? All hands went up. You must understand the proper definition of success. Most of you think success is money, car, big house. Are you following me? That's not success. That's not success. Success is the fulfillment of purpose. Write that down. Success is the fulfillment of purpose. Success is the fulfillment of purpose. You can have the money if you are not in your purpose, you commit suicide. You have an overdose of drugs. Oh, you can have the fame, the popularity, the status. If you are not in your purpose, you commit suicide. You can have, you talk about the popularity, you talk about the people love you because of what you have done. If it's not what you are born to do, hear me, it will still frustrate you. I don't know your generation if they have watched this guy a lot. How many of you are familiar with this actor, Sylvester Stallone? He did the Rambo series. You remember the Rambo series? Yes. Do you know that Sylvester Stallone, when he did the series on Rambo, he was the highest paid actor in Hollywood. And when he was the highest paid actor, he reached on top. Then imagine he reached on top, then he was empty. He was on top. I mean, he had all the money, he had the popularity, he had the fame, and everything. But he felt empty and almost killed and took his life. So, what you are looking at is not success. What you call success, the picture you have that you call success is not success. Can you fulfill your purpose and not have that? Yes. How many of you, I don't know, I'll throw a lot of names at you. How many of you know of this lady by the name of Mother Teresa? Yes. You've heard of her, isn't it? Yes. She didn't have any mansion, she didn't have any money. But history cannot be written without that lady. Why? She lived for people. Her purpose. Now, I want you to follow the story. This is a woman who was a nun in a convent and she used to teach. But went to India from Macedonia. She is in India there on a missionary work as a nun and she teaches. Every day as she's walking, she passes people in the streets, naked people, people who are starving, people who are old people who are sick, no one to take care of them. Every day she walks and passes, but something happens in her heart. Every time she walks, something happens in her heart. Every time she passes that road, something happens in her heart. Then she says, you know what, I can't continue. I have to do something. Your purpose is inside you. It's not outside. Your purpose is connected to your heart. The things you feel deeply that don't leave you. The things that, for her, it brought pain when she saw those people. And she went and resigned, took her last pay, went and bought foodstuffs and medication and started helping people. And like the saying goes, the rest is history. She impacted, people came in. Do you know there are people who have money but they don't have a heart? Yes. <laughs> 
Do you know when they find a person who has a heart, they'll release the money? Yes. <laughs> Purpose is what you were born to do. And listen, why am I bringing that in? Do you know that if all of you enter your purpose, you will solve their unemployment problem in Zambia? Mm -hmm. Because imagine, as we are here, our purpose is different. My own is what I'm doing right now, teaching, leading. Your own might be as a designer. You are just passionate about clothes. You are just passionate. Your own might have nothing to do with clothes. You can wear anything, it doesn't matter. But when it comes to test bags, my God, you can bake a cake. You can create rhythm in the mouth with test bags by the type of combination of how you combine things. Another person that might have nothing to do with that. But do you know that when they see a piece of wood, they know I can bring an ego out of that piece of wood. Purpose is different for all of us. Tell your neighbor, we are not the same. We are not the same. Tell say, please behave. Please behave. Don't try to be like me. Tell somebody, say, you're very useless when you try to be like me. Tell somebody, if you can be yourself, you are untouchable. You are you have no ego. No, no one has ever been born like you. No one has ever been born like you. Give yourselves a clap of <laughs> Tell somebody you are a powerful origin. You are a powerful origin. But tell somebody you are a fake copy. You are a fake copy. Tell somebody, say, please work on the original parts. Please work on the original parts. Tell somebody, please drop this fake copy part. Please drop this fake copy part. After I tell them, say, look at it, it's not working. Look at where it goes. <laughs> tell somebody, please look at it, look at where it goes. It's not working. Drop it. Tell somebody, become who you were born to be. Tell somebody, there is greatness in you. Tell somebody, you can impact an entire continent. Tell somebody, you can impact an entire generation. But tell somebody, you have to be an original. You have to be an original. You have to be an original. Yeah. Tell somebody you can be inspired by others. You can be inspired by others. Tell somebody others. you can be motivated by others. You can be motivated by others. And tell somebody you must be you. You must be you. Are you hearing what you're hearing? Yes. Don't forget, he makes known the end from <laughs> Now, that's a two-sided coin. He makes known the end from <laughs> One part is what you're hearing where you have to know what you are born for. You have to know your assignment, your purpose, your dream, what you are here on earth to do. That's one part. The other part is until you put an end to certain things in your life, your beginning can never begin. Someone didn't hear me. Paul. He makes known the end from... I said the first part of that is that you need to have an end. That end is the goal, the target, the vision, the dream, your purpose, what you were born to do and achieve on the earth. That is what you look at to begin your life. Now, the other part of it is this. When you see that end, until you put an end to what you have been doing, your beginning does not start. Pastor Manasseh, how did you start reading three books in a week? I stopped sleeping careless. 
Pastor Ross, how did you start reading three books? I stopped watching TV. You know that some people, they sleep as if they'll be crowned. Well slept. <laughs> Listen, follow me, please follow me. If you are 24 years right now, as I'm speaking to you, if you are 24 years and you have been sleeping a minimum of eight hours, you have already slept eight years of your life. <laughs> 24 hours. Each day has what? 24 hours. Eight hours is one third of. 24. So if you are 24 years right now as I'm speaking to you and you have been sleeping Imagine if you are 24 years right now you have already listen, we are not talking about TV we are not talking about eating we are not talking about your time for play just sleep just sleep, you have already spent eight years. Then when we put TV there, when we put how you love playing, to my soap operas, to my series, to my movies, when we put music, entertainment, the way you love music, and the way you love to hang around and play, when we put all that, that's why in Africa, for a person to have anything, they must retire. <laughs> Do you know that at me and her, at 25 years, we set a goal to say at 30 years, we want to be financially free. We set a five-year goal. When, when we're 25 years, we set a goal. 30, we must be financially free. What financial freedom meant for us then was if we can have in the old currency 10 million passive income money that just comes in, whether we work or we don't work. That was then. I only turned uh, 41, so I'm still here. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Talk to me, are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes. So at 25 years, we set that goal to say, at 30 years, we want to be financially free. And financial freedom to us was if we can have 10 million coming in, in the current currency to be 10,000, every month. Do you know that in five years time we hit that target? What was coming in wasn't 10 million, it was 8 million. But in five years we had built three flats, we had built a house, so we were not paying rentals, then we had 8 million coming in. At 30 years. At 30 years. At 30 years. Was that my name, but you were 30 per full year? Was that my name, but you were like, I love you, time. Get the principle. Get the principle. Get the principle. Meaning, if you are 30 today, you are going to set it for 35. If you are 35 today, you are going to set it for 40. Are you following me? Yes. You are going to set it for what? 40. If you are 40, you are setting it for what? 45. If you are 45, you are setting it for what? 50. If you are 18, you are setting it for what? 23. <laughs> are you hearing what you are hearing? Yes. Tell somebody you can achieve anything that you believe. Tell somebody you and God, you and God are unbeatable. 
Unbeatable. Tell somebody, with God in your team, with God in your team, you can achieve anything. You can achieve anything. That's why before we conclude this session, if there is anyone here who doesn't know God personally, I'm going to ask you to know Him. Is that okay? Yes. Because I would listen. If I were to bring, maybe the next session I'm going to have with you, I'm going to bring success stories. I'll just bring people. I'll share maybe 30 minutes. Then I just bring people. We have one guy. He used to be, you know what you call ego ego. But ego 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 man. What happened? What happened? What happened? What happened? What happened? Yeah. Uh, listen. Follow me. Follow me. The impact of the ministry and what we have been doing. This guy, someone told him, you know what? There is a man who I would love you to meet. And he walked from this notorious compound to Chiwonia. He walked from Chiwonia to come here. Just here. I used to have the session every Saturday. And he would walk that Saturday when we have the session. He was a dropout, grade 9. I want you to fall. Then, as he began to sit now, as wisdom, knowledge, light, understanding began to hit him in every session, he says, every time we we'll break, as he's going home, you'd go crying. Because you'd hear things, and when he looks at where he is and what he's hearing, it was like it will never happen. But he believed and he kept coming. He learned laws on how to do business, how to negotiate, how to sell. He learned laws on how to create value. That money, you see, people, some of you think you are broke right now because you don't have money. No, you are broke because you are not creating any value. Write that down. <laughs> you are not broke because you don't have money. You are broke because you are not creating any value. You are not broke because you don't have money. You are broke because you are not creating value. That value can be goods. That value can be services. That value can be in that whatever it is. But you are supposed to create some sort of value that people can exchange for. For the value they give you, the money equivalent to the value you are bringing on the table. So the issue is not money in your life. The issue is that you have never woken up to what value you are supposed to create in your generation. Are you hearing what you are hearing? Yes. The issue is not money. Some of you are saying, Pastor Mara said, me, I don't even have anyone to date. People don't date valueless people. Yes. <laughs> are you hearing what you are hearing? Yes. Listen, for someone to date you, there is something you are bringing on the table that is making them better. That is making them want to run. The Bible says two cannot walk together except in agreement. Are you following me? Meaning you have something, I have something, we agree to go somewhere. Did you know that me, I get surprised. You hear a guy say, in front of like a party like a virgin, Mufusa, you a virgin. <laughs> I want a decent girl, Pastor Malasa. Muchet, I'm going to be decent. I'm going to come to church. I'm going to be decent. Come to church. Anyway, for the decent thing. His own apartment, he drives a game. Yes. 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 Are you hearing what 
Hallelujah, yes. Yes. Vice versa. Yes. Let me hear me. You don't go to a man who can't make your life better than you were in your father's house. If a man will take you from your father's house, he must make your life better. What the use of giving the good you have to put the weather situation? <laughs> <laughs> somebody life is about fun. Life is about fun. somebody life is about fun. Life is about fun. So, as long as you don't know how to create money, you will be poor. You will be alone, you will suffer long. As long as you don't know how to create value, you will be poor, you will be alone, and you will suffer long. Do you know all these things you hear people say? You boss. Yes, that's true. You boss. That's true. You boss. Yes. <laughs> what about my connection? Yes. Hear yeah. me. God in your compound today, the best teller always has clients. Mm-hmm. The best mechanic always has clients. Mm-hmm. You, are not, you don't know. That's why you're saying what you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> when you're ignorant, you talk too much. What even Chito? Chito is only my. Ah, you only my. Anything, I mean the school of wisdom. Anything that you would want to understand that you have not understood, please feel free to ask. 
don't forget, we don't have much time. If you've seen the time, the time has already gone. So I expect you to ask first. Uh, how can you differentiate between wisdom and knowledge, and how can you identify it? Okay, how can you differentiate between wisdom and knowledge? There are actually three. There is knowledge, there is understanding in between, and there is wisdom. Knowledge is information. Knowledge is information you get. Are you following me? Yes. That's knowledge, the information, books, whatever you see, you are learning. That's information. Understanding is when you now begin to know how that knowledge works. That's understanding. We call it comprehension. When you're able to comprehend, when you're able to see what was being communicated and how it applies. Are you following? That's understanding. Wisdom is being able to apply what you have comprehended correctly and efficiently at any given time. That's wisdom. I come again. Knowledge is information. That's knowledge. Information. Anything you learn, anywhere you get things, that's information that you're getting. Understanding is when you begin to comprehend, meaning when you begin to see what is being communicated and how it applies. That's understanding. That's why understanding sometimes can be used as seeing. Have you seen Utamala Muntu? Oh, now Oh, I see. Simple. I follow what I'm saying. I come back I see Vichar. I own a view to communicate. And they say, sir, they will come. That's understanding. Wisdom is now the ability to take that understanding and apply it efficiently, effectively, correctly in any given situation. So wisdom is the actual living. Wisdom is not theoretical. Oh, Nina, wisdom. Mm -mm. Let me give you a practical example. I've been married to her 20 years last year, December. We have never found. <laughs> Tell somebody wisdom. Wisdom. <laughs> I always get such a response. Listen, listen. When you don't know, I told you, you don't rush to talk. You expose your ignorance. <laughs> so every time you rush to talk, you are showing how empty it is inside. <laughs> Proverbs 20, write it down. Proverbs 20, verse 3. Can I read it for you? Yes. Proverbs 20, verse 3. It is to one's honor to avoid strife, but every fool is quick to quarrel. <laughs> Someone did not hear. Listen, Proverbs 20. Proverbs 20, verse 3. Listen. It is to one's honor to avoid strife. It is to a man's honor, to a woman's honor to avoid strife. But every foolish person. get back. That's the level of foolishness. You have to argue, fight, then you now get back, then the reconciliation is what is nice to you. <laughs> Listen to what the Bible says. It is to a man's honor to avoid strife. But every fool is quick to quarrel. So imagine the world has celebrated foolishness. <laughs> Quickly, our time is moving. Questions? Questions? Quickly. Uh, on the same knowledge and the wisdom, how how to gain wisdom and knowledge? I'd like to know how to gain knowledge and wisdom. Knowledge, you gain it by learning. Have you seen here? You are learning things. 
things are opening up to you. Bible, I read this book every year, cover to cover, the Bible. I read it many, there are books in the Bible I read sometimes every week. Five, six books in the Bible, I read them every week. Some I read, I read continuously. I have a library of close to, I have to count them again. Last time I counted there were 800 books to go into 900 books. I have that library, I know most of those books there, I've read them. Maybe there are about 100 books I've not read there. You want knowledge, you go for knowledge. You stop buying suits, you start buying books. You stop changing wigs. Yeah. You start, some of you, your life is in your phone. If you sell that phone, you can start your life. Don't forget what I said when I started. There are people who love to look smart, but in life they are not smart. So people who love to look smart are people who concentrate on useless things, outward things, makeup, hair, clothes outside, pecoron, what people see and feel outside. When you go inside them, they are empty, they are, my God, you don't even want to be near them. Are you hearing what you're hearing? Because they put nothing in there. They can't read the Bible, they can't read the book, they can't go to a seminar, they cannot pursue a mentor, they don't, they are empty. Then when a person suffers, you want to point at the devil. You know the biggest devil? Have you got it that? So that's knowledge. Knowledge is learning the actual what you get. Wisdom is application. The way you apply yourself. Are you following me? You can ask God based on your understanding and where you are. If Christ is in you, Christ is the wisdom and understanding of God. But mostly that wisdom is dormant. It's not activated. So Paul prays for the church in Ephesus. I pray that God can give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation knowledge. That you might know him better. Ephesians 1 17. Colossians 1 verse 9. It says, I pray that God might fill you with all spiritual wisdom and understanding. Philippians 1 verse 9. It says, let your love abound more and more in knowledge and in depth of insight. Why was Paul praying to the church if this church had Christ and the Holy Spirit in them? So you can pray for wisdom. James 1 verse 5 says, if you don't have wisdom, ask. <laughs> when God appeared to Solomon, David had already taught uh, Solomon to say when he appears to you, you don't ask for money, you don't ask for riches, you don't ask for glory, you don't ask for the death of your enemies, you don't ask for anything. When he appears to you, you ask him, give me wisdom. That's what David taught Solomon. And David imparted the hunger for wisdom in Solomon. That when God appeared, God gave him a blank check. What do you want? Anything I'll give you. He says, you've made me to govern these people, but I'm a child. I do not know my left from my right. He says, give me an understanding and discerning heart. Give me wisdom to govern. And the greatest leader when it comes to governance in the world, Rose. It is established in history that the whole world came to one man. The whole world. <coughs> Have you gotten it? Uh, okay, I'm coming. Let's have that one. Yes, sir. I'm sure I should just that. Feel free. Yes, sir. Be comfortable. Yeah. Uh, there's a saying which says, Many people are watching Chinjaku, so my question is, 
how can you believe but you still maintain your relationship with Ghana? I love that question. Give me a couple of questions. Because a lot of people in the church are bound with that little understanding. When that the story he's talking about, we can read it. It's in the three in the Gospels. You can read it in Matthew. You can read it in Luke. Let me bring the one in Luke. Luke chapter 19. This is the story of the rich young ruler. The rich young ruler came to Jesus and says, "Master, what must I do to have eternal life?" Are you following me? Yes. Then Jesus told him, I mean, obey the law. Do this, do this. He says, from my youth, from the time I was a young person, I have followed all this. And the Bible says, Jesus looked at him and says, wow, a rare young guy. A rare young guy who has been following everything from a young age. He says, one thing only you lack. And he told him, give what you have. Sell your possessions and give to the poor. You remember that? Yes. Do you know what that young guy didn't understand? When you give to the poor, you lend to the Lord. God was not telling him to let go of his wealth. God wanted his wealth to connect to God. Hmm. <clears throat> as long as his wealth was the way he created it, he ended through discipline. Saving. He, he ended the world, the, what we call it the Babylonian way. Where you follow certain things, and people saving, and people tight, and people tight. That's how he learned his world. He wanted him to have wealth that is by faith. Because where we are right now, in the kingdom, I wish there's so much to now teach you. The kingdom of God, we don't have anything, but we have everything. Are you following what I've just told you? Yeah. In the kingdom of God, why, which was what Jesus wanted to introduce him to, in the kingdom, you don't have anything. Because the king owns everything. But because you are the son and the child of the king, and you are a co-heir with Christ, everything that is the king is yours. But when you come to God, God has to circumcise your heart. He has to disconnect you from your love of money and that pressure. So he told him, give so that circumcision can take place. Then the money will not be a hold on you. I will be the hold on you. Then now I can double and multiply what you released. Amen. Peter asked the question, follow. That's why, you see, you must sit with people who eat the Bible. When people don't eat the Bible, they will not explain scripture to you. Peter asked, doesn't it surprise you that the question Peter asked to say, how can anyone then be saved? Because remember, Jesus said, it's hard, isn't it? Mm -hmm. ah. Then Peter said, oh, you are saying it's hard, but in and ground. So how would anyone be saved? Do you know what they say? What is impossible with man is possible with God. Peter went on to say, but we have left everything. I want you to follow the discussion. We have left everything to follow you. Then Jesus told him, say, my young man, anyone who has left father, mother, wife, children, properties, houses, will in this life have explosion and will have life in the life to come. <laughs> So when reading the scriptures, don't read a verse. We call it quoting scripture out of context. Mm -hmm. You must read the whole thing, where it's coming from, where you are, and where it's going, for you to understand scripture. Abraham was wealthy and is already in heaven. Poor people go to Abraham to be trained. Oh. When you read the Bible in Luke chapter 16, there's a story of a poor guy. You remember that? Yes. Come on, talk to me. I don't have to open everything. Yes. You, there's a guy who's poor who sits at the gate of the rich man. Yes. Begging always, isn't it? Yes. He has made a, poor, a vow of poverty. You don't drama. You don't drama. You don't drama. You don't drama. You don't follow me? When that guy dies because of the level of poverty that he is, Heaven is a wealthy place. The streets are paved of gold. 
the gates are with pearls, the greatest stones. The, 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 the atmosphere in heaven is so wealthy that when the poor guy enters, he has to go to a wealthy man to be kept, Abraham, to counter him on how he lives. <laughs> Tell somebody to say, Jesus became poor. Jesus became poor. So that you can become rich. So that you can become rich. Somebody, if you remain poor, if you remain poor, it's not Zambia you're in. It's not Zambia you're in. It's ignorance. It's ignorance. Have you understood that one? Yes. So it, it has nothing to do. All the people you read in the Bible are wealth. Abraham, wealth. Isaac, wealth. Jacob, wealth. Job, wealth. David, wealth. Solomon, wealth. The people you celebrate in the Bible, wealth. Do you know the people who are friends of Jesus? Go and read your Bible again. Remember the guy who died? Did that have to go and wake up? Lazarus? Go and find out how loaded he was. You remember Nicodemus, the one who came in the night? Yes. You remember the one he came with, jo uh, Joseph of Arimathea? Yes. The rich and wealthy man. These were Jesus' friends who used to host dinners for Jesus. I don't know where you get the concept from that we're dealing with the poor kingdom. <laughs> <laughs> Time. Let me have two questions, then we'll wrap up. Two questions. I'll have that one. Um, you have talked about papers and taxes. What's the difference between papers and taxes? I don't understand. You don't understand? Yes. Let me explain that. Papers is what produces success. Let me explain further. Papers, let me give you a practical example. Have you seen what I'm doing right now? Yes. I am impacting you, isn't it? Yes. I'm transforming, isn't it? Yes. I'm giving light and wisdom, isn't it? Yes. This is what I was born to do. Are you following me? Yes. The more I do this, the more they call me to places and they pay me crazy money. Yes. So, as I'm doing what I was born to do, money, fame, opportunities, what people crave for comes to me. Because I'm focused on what I was born to do. Are you, are you getting that? So what people call success begins to come as an outflow of me doing my purpose. Hear me. When it is all said and done, the greatest success is when God tells you, well done, my good and faithful servant. Yes. At the end of all this, at the end of all this, if God is going to tell you, where's he? Well done, my good and faithful servant. I would have been the most successful man on earth. Because my success here is useless if in the book, what I'm doing is not what is in the book. Mm -hmm. And that's why a lot of people will be depressed. Because when the book is open, when they look at what you were born for, what God created you for, and what you did, it will not match. <laughs> Last question. You talk about generational cases and like there are people that have this case. They might work, start up a business, acquire a skill, everything, everything, but they just never become successful for anything. How most of that has to do, remember I said something, you and God are unbeatable. The only way a curse will stay on a person is that person is not properly close with God. God is light. In him there is no darkness. You cannot be close to light and darkness remains in you. It doesn't happen. So the issue is the relationship there. And how open that person is to light. Can I wrap up here now? Okay, let me get the last one. Please, I, I, listen. Listen, listen. Let me give you a principle. 
in the school of success, if you are going to be successful, respect time. Yes. Yes. I have been given time up to 13 hours. I must wrap up at 13 hours. Is that okay? Yes. If you are going to become great, if you are going to become outstanding, you must be precise with time. The only thing that you have that you can either become better with or useless with is time. The other thing is your mind and what you do with it. Two free gifts you are given. Your mind and 24 hours. What you do with these two things determines where you end up in life. Poor people spend their time. Jokers watch movies and have fun. Successful people read, they learn, they grow daily. You've got that 1.5 gig cow sick, cow five quarter. Give us, give us, give us the question. Someone who can and someone who can help you understand the word of God in a different level. I, I hear you, and I'm going to give you a simple answer for your question. You are looking at one right now with the wife. Is that what you see? Some people, Baba Funa was like, oh, Kafune Shani, Kafune Shani. Right now, as you are listening to me, you are listening to somebody you can follow. But most people don't make the decision, most people don't make up their minds. So, that's how I say, ah. It was powerful. I was blessed. <laughs> Do you know? Please hear me. Do you know the hardest thing to keep is inspiration? That's the hardest thing to keep. That's why Mungankale Mosechen is so powerful as it is. But if you don't follow, if you're not consistent, if this is not happening every day, every week, guess what? If I meet you in three months, you are where you were today. Life is, please hear me, life is a choice. You can hear a man, this guy I was talking to you about who will come in the next session. Someone just told you, there is a man you must go and sit under. And he stopped everything and began to pursue. Today do you think he's regretting? No. You'll hear him when he comes. How many of you have heard of this night of laughter? If you are in comment, night of love. Do you know this guy by the name of Chinglis? Yes. The visionary? Yes. That's my son. Spiritual son. He was born in a session like this at the University of Sunday. And he started following. Are you following what I'm telling you? He started following. Today, that's a qualified engineer. Are you following me? Graduated at the University of Zambia, qualified engineer, but in Wisdom 101, our sessions we call them Wisdom 101. In Wisdom 101, he got his purpose and understood that his own is comedy to make people laugh. And he built Night of Laughter, brought all the comedians in Zambia, started bringing, having a Night of Laughter face for the first to be held in this country. Those are people who are birthed under this grace. Then imagine you here. It was Queen here on account. <laughs> now let's do something very important. If we don't do this, the whole session wouldn't be as powerful as it's supposed to be. I want you to bow your heads down. You are here, you have never encountered Christ, meaning you have never opened your heart to God to say, Lord, I want you to become Lord and Savior of my life. You have never given your life to the Lord. You have never. He has never come into your heart to become Lord and Savior. So that this wisdom we are talking about, this understanding we are talking about, begins to flow in you. You don't, life the, you don't have that, the life of God. I want to ask you to lift your hand so that I pray with you. You have never given your life. I want you to lift your hand. I want to pray for you. I'm seeing those hands. Don't be ashamed. We all started like that. That was our first step, all of us. We all started like that. 
I'm seeing those hands. I'm seeing those hands. Don't, don't hesitate. Don't even doubt. It's nothing to do with anyone here. This is your personal walk now. This is your life. This is what will determine purpose. Unlock it. This is what will make you become an ultimate success. This is the beginning of a greater life. I'm still waiting. There's somebody who's still doubting. I want you to lift the hand. I thank you for that hand that has gone up. I thank you for that hand that has gone up. I'm going to wait a little bit more. Don't feel ashamed. I thank you for that hand that has gone up. I thank you for that hand that has gone up. I want all of you who have lifted up your hands, I want you to pray this prayer with me. Pray after me. Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father. Thank, you today. thank you for today. I realize, I realize I'm, a I'm a sinner. I cannot save myself. I, I, repent, today I repent today of my sins. Of my sins. Lord, Jesus, Lord Jesus, I ask you, I ask you to, come into my heart to come into my heart and become Lord over my life. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that I am born again in Jesus' name. Amen. Drop your hands. Let me have these papers go through. I want your name and number. You've just given your life to the Lord.